Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to show you a variation on a Tim Holtz technique that uses distress stains over the craft resist paper. I'm going to be using a Sweet Pea Stamps image for my main image for my card and this one's from Teresa Sherman and it's called Jeweled Fairy. I'm using some of the original set of Craft Resist and this is just a relatively plain one. I've got Picket Fence Distress Stain, Tea Dye, Black Soot and Vintage Photo. And then my secret weapon is some of the Lindy Stamp Gang Moonshadow Mists. Now these are all um, sort of like walnut ink based. So they all have brown tones and then they have a coloured shimmer through it. So it blends absolutely beautifully with the Distress Stains. I've already coloured my image using Distress Inks and my aim today is to create a background that sets this off perfectly. First thing I'm going to do, give the picket fence a little shake just to mix up the paint. And then I'm just going to pop it on my craft mat. Now I'm going to slide this through. Why? Because I don't want it to be completely uniform. I'd like a little bit of variation here. Make sure you get it right into those corners. You don't want any completely naked bits. And then before going on to the next colour, just wipe the craft mat off with a baby wipe or a paper towel or both. You can see that by applying the picket fence this way, I've got a few little areas that are uncovered, some that are darker, some that are lighter. I just find that it gives a bit more variation. So for backgrounds, which you know I love, um, it's a bit more interesting to look at. Now for the next step, I'm going to use my lightest colour, which is tea dye. Prime it a bit and give it a rub over the background. Now you'll find that because it's going over the top of that picket fence and the picket fence is a distress that sometimes a little bit of the picket fence reactivates. That's okay. It's not going to ruin the tip of your um, little applicator at all. Just get a little bit of extra colour on there. Now you can see that it's made it a bit white. I just pounce it on a paper towel to make sure it's clean. See how easy that was? So again, that one was the tea dye. So I'm just going to give that a little dry with the heat gun again. Now I'm going to apply the next two colours, which are black soot and vintage photo to the craft mat just like I did to begin with with the picket fence. Again, um, because I'd like a slightly more varied look. The black soot is quite a strong colour, so don't put too much down or else you'll just have a black card. So again, dragging through one direction, sort of pushing it down a little bit dragging through another direction. Now I found it best when using the Distress Stains to lift and put it down again before dragging rather than twist because it's extremely easy to end up with a mud puddle. I know they're not supposed to turn to mud but I have found that with my twisting motion that I usually use uh, it's very easy for them to end up quite muddy. Now, as you can see, that black soot really has uh, made it quite dark. So I'm going to add a bit more of the vintage photo. Okay, that's more like what I was after. Now you don't have to waste all of this, you could have easily put a tag through that if you wanted to. Um, I'm just trying to be tidy, 
So while it's still wet, you won't see a lot of the craft resist. And keeping in mind that only this top section or side section had the resist on it, this other section of the paper um, had just the printed image. Isn't this amazingly gorgeous? The combination of those colours with the picket fence is stunning. This is where I'm at with my background after the application of those four Distress Stain colours. Let me just get nice and close for you so you can fully appreciate how gorgeous that really is. You can still see that craft uh, resist but you've got these beautiful marbled sort of tones from the, from the picket fence being applied first and not in a uniform way and then having the distress stains be dragged across the cardstock so it's not a single colour. Now I could have easily left my background at this point and called it finished but I'm constantly referring to the image I've already coloured that I'll be mounting on top of it and for me the image had a hint of purple in the wings and the dress so the background really needed a hint of purple as well. You might want to stop yours here, that's okay. For me, I'm going to add another couple of layers. I'm going to add some dusty concord and black soot just around the edge to sort of give it a bit of a frame. Now this won't add a lot of purple colour but it'll just add a smidge, just so that uh, it suits the image that I'm going to be colouring a little better. Again, because my background is not uniform, the colour will not take in a uniform way. Now you'll also notice that adding the Distress Ink over the top makes that resist stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more of the Dusty Concord over the resist, just to highlight it. Lucky last for a little bit of the black soot. In case I didn't show you before, I'm just using the little foam pad on my ink applicator tool. Apply the black soot to the very edges of the card to achieve that framing effect I mentioned. Now for the final step here, I'm going to use a technique that might look a bit familiar to you. It's Tim's spritz and flick. Shape the moon shadow mist until all of the mica is suspended in the liquid. Spritz a bit into your hand and flick onto the cardstock. Yes, you're going to get messy. It's part of the fun. Just make sure you don't have any finished projects hanging around on your craft desk. Now, I don't want to go too overboard here. I think that might be enough actually. Now you can dry this with your craft gun if you like but it'll dry pretty quickly so I'm just going to leave that to air dry. And this is what adding the moon shadow mist does. You can see all these gorgeous little water droplets. Now because it's a brown based dye it's perfectly coordinated with everything I've done already but then when you tilt it it adds a little bit of shimmer. So you can see you've got those gorgeous vintage brown looking droplets and then when you tilt you get the shimmer colour. This is how I've chosen to finish off my background. Now admittedly I've covered a bit of it up but you know the, the point is really not to have all of the background exposed, although you could. The point was to create a gorgeous background that really complements my image, and I think I've done that. So what I've done is I've just put a little bit of the Prima trim, and this is just the black lace from the trim set. Um, it's this one here. I've finished with a few Prima flowers. Now these were actually uh, vintage roses that were sort of a pale aged paper look with some text printed on them. 
Now, obviously, they weren't the right color for this card, and I really want the image to stand out. So I've recolored everything using my um, Lindy's sprays. I've used the same color Moon Shadow Mist on the flower as I used on the background, but then I've also added a little bit of the Burnished Brass Moon Shadow Mist and some of the Midnight Rendezvous Raven Starburst Spray just to color match a little bit more. I then dipped these Prima leaves in the leftovers of the spray um, and just sort of swooshed them around a little bit so that they get a bit of the mica and took up the color so that they weren't quite so bright and green. I've done the same thing to the little flower in the corner up here. I'll show you a bit better in a second. And then I've added, you can see these little, I'll show you when they're up close. These are little stamens that you can buy from I Am Roses and I've just soaked those in the leftover sprays. So they're um, not completely coated. They've got a bit of variation. Um, I've also got a little word um, metal plaque thing here. It's from Tim Holtz. Um, now it's really difficult to see in this particular light, but I'll show you in a second. And I've just colored it with alcohol inks and black. Is I've put a little bit of um, platinum stickles on just the edges of the flowers. So you can see how gorgeous that flower is and how many different colors are sort of in there. So you've got the, you've got the violet, you've got the brown and the black in the center. So you can see the stickles just on the edges of the flowers here. I've added a few tiny little crystals just to the edges of the wings and a few of the little armbands just so it matches the flowers a bit. Ah, there you go. So you can see that word in the light here, covered with alcohol inks and the black paint. And again, I've just done this flower the same as the others. I've got a little bit of that black lace along the bottom. And I really like the way the flowers and the leaves have turned out. See there, that's a stamen. So instead of putting it in the center of a flower, I've just soaked it in the leftover moon shadow mists. And it stays slightly white around the tops. And then the brown soaks into all the little crevices. I think they look kind of cool. Now all of these three flowers actually started off the same. They started off like this one here. But while they were wet, what I've done to make them look slightly different is sort of scrunch them up a little bit. So I scrunched this one more than the others. And that way it just looks like you've got three similar flowers, but not all completely alike. Now, I love the way that the background just sort of peeks through here. You can see all the detail and all that beautiful moon shadow mist just in the back here. And I really think it complements this sort of grungy, steampunky card. So I hope you like what I've done with it. Um, trying to keep it a little bit feminine still with all the flowers, but definitely wanting to keep it with this beautiful, dark sort of fantasy theme. So that is my finished card. I hope you like it. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.